So who are you? I'm Greg Sullivan. I'm in the Windows Phone Group at Microsoft. Yeah, and we're here at the South by Southwest conference. And uh, two weeks ago, you guys announced a really cool new phone. Yeah, it's real exciting. Uh, Tell me what it is. Windows Phone 7. Okay. We, we kind of looked at where we were in the phone space and where the industry was and said, uh, it's time for a different approach. Yeah. And so uh, the Windows Phone 7 series is a, is a different kind of phone um, and different in a whole bunch of ways, different user experience, uh, our different approach to how we work with developers, uh, different on how we integrate experiences, whether the stuff is on the web, on your phone, on your PC, to really bring it together. So yeah. it's, a, it's a departure. It's, it's really interesting. I, I had a chance to play with one for an hour in the airport, actually. Yeah. I, met, I met one of the product managers. And it's the first phone I've held that doesn't look like a copy of the iPhone. It looks like you guys did a complete we're not going to look at Apple, we're going to come out with something different. Exactly. And tell me how that happened, because that's not yeah. what we expect to see from Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft <laughs> well, is, has a rep for you know, sort of cloning other things, or copying, or, or just being slow moving, and this looks like a different approach. So it is, we, we managed to su surprise some folks at, uh, at Barcelona when we made the announcement. I think we, we looked at this at, at, the, at the kind of prevailing design and user interaction model in phones today and said, you know, we, we can do better than a, in a grid of icons, yeah. uh, you know, and making something meaningful is putting it all the way on the left. That's not the be all end all of user experience. And we said that we need to focus on a couple of things, a, a smart design that really pervades the system and then also extends to, to third party applications that can then build on that smart design. So the, the consistency of the experience is, is, is really great. And then focus on, on the content. Yeah. Um, with a Windows phone, I, I, I log in, I sign it with my Windows Live ID and automatically, it shows me my, my friends. I have, in the, in the uh, people tile, I have pictures of, of my friends from Facebook, my contacts in Exchange or wherever, um, and I see my stuff and instantly the phone is personalized. Yeah. And so my phone, my Windows phone is going to look much different from your Windows phone, yeah. even though we do actually have some of the same friends. But uh, yeah. um, you, know, you get the idea is that it's really around the smart design that, that brings the content to the fore. Well, that's an interesting idea because here at South By, we, we're seeing a lot of, everybody here is on Twitter, mm -hmm. everybody here is on Facebook, everybody, almost everybody is on Flickr. Almost everybody's on YouTube, right? Yeah. We're all content creators here. There's 15,000 yeah. of us. A, a, a large chunk of us are on Foursquare already. It's a, only a year old service, a right. location based service, or Gowalla, you know, which is located here in Austin. And these streams, these real time streams, are always constantly bringing data to our handsets, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that's really interesting is. The, the phone system stayed up, you know, partly because AT&T spent a lot of money. Better than last year. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if you walked around town and seen all the mobile uh, cell phone trucks yes. here. So they spent a lot of money and a lot of effort to make sure that this conference stayed up. Yeah. Um, but what that means to me is while I'm walking around, I want this thing to change, to bring what's happening to me. I mean, I, I've been watching all morning what's happening in a conference yeah. At a, at a Microsoft conference in Las Vegas, and exactly. we're here in uh, Austin, <laughs> yeah. Texas, yeah. and these streams just keep bringing me data and and re, you know reports and pictures and videos from yeah. that other conference, thousands of miles away. Right, and the the important idea here is that you think about um, the people that that you want to keep in touch with uh, as people. Yeah. You don't you don't think the higher order bit is is oh uh, Twitter, you know I Twitter Greg, yeah. no like. We know each other, there's multiple ways that we can communicate with each other, and my phone should kind of aggregate those and, and bring all of that stuff that's happening in real time. So when we think about people, there's, there's a hub here that, that brings together all of my people that I care about, my contacts, my friends, and then it exposes all the different ways that I can interact with those people. Sometimes I, I want to see their Facebook updates, I want to see the last tweet, I want to uh, IM them, or I want to send them an SMS message. Um, we think about, you know, my, my friends and my, my are not apps, they're yeah. people, and I have multiple ways of, of communicating with them. And my phone should be smart enough to kind of aggregate those and think and realize that they're people, they're not just separate channels of communication. Yeah. So that's an important concept and something that we brought to bear in these hubs uh, and the people hub, but also for, for gaming and for, for pictures and, and for music and video. Yeah, let's talk about the competitive landscape because mm. um, 
it's interesting, and, and it, it, you know, it's, it seems like uh, Microsoft is late to the party a little bit, you know, with a nice consumer level, exciting smartphone, right? Um, we're not going to see this until this fall, right? Yeah, this will be out uh, holiday season this year, by the, so, end, by the end of 2010. And, and between now and then, Apple could come out with something, or Palm could come out with yeah. something, and we, we don't know how it'll play out when this thing actually hits the market, but right now it's a really exciting yeah. looking phone. But let's set up the, the marketplace. How, how do you see the marketplace playing out? I mean, Apple's out there with the iPhone and, mm -hmm. and at least has the mind share, if yeah. not the market share. Um, you know, Nokia has a lot of market share, but not a lot of mind share, and, and their phones just suck for doing the kinds of stuff that you're talking about. I, I mean, their, their N900 is interesting, but I like, I just like the, the design and the yeah. feel of this. It feels warmer, it feels more human, yeah. right? Um, Palm is interesting, but they chose a small screen, and that they say, oh no, we, we did our customer research, but sorry, you walk around even with normal people, and today, they don't use the phone like this. They use the phone like this. Mm -hmm. So the, you need a big display surface, and it looks like you guys made the right choice on that, right? Yeah, I think when we think about the the, the marketplace for uh, for in smartphones, it's it's incredibly competitive. It's it's accelerating in terms of the the rate of change is accelerating. Yeah. So it is definitely not boring. Um, we have a, a really strong team in Redmond that has uh, has been brought together to build Windows Phone Seven. And uh, when we think about the, the marketplace, we think about our customers. We spend less time thinking, uh, even though it's, it's Microsoft, I know you, you have a very familiar with, uh, with the place. So, yep. But we think about the customer, we think about the people that are using the phone. And in the case of Windows Phone 7 series, we really built it um, with, the, with the end user in mind, thinking about what it's going to be like to be using, to be, to be looking at my videos, to be bringing together all the pictures on my phone and my PC and on you know, your Facebook page that yeah. you posted in one place to me. So we think about nailing uh, a great user experience with this smart design that integrates experiences yeah. from the web, from my PC, from my Xbox, um, and, and really builds and this key. platform. It's, it's key, well we yeah. talked a little bit before about this notion of the, the reef that you've been talking about and it, the idea is, is that we, when we think about the platform, yeah. It's not just we have a phone platform and a PC platform and a web platform and a gaming platform. They're all part of the same thing. Yeah. And this is a key concept for us and a key differentiator, I think, because I can get my Xbox Live account on this phone and I can have a game and, and let's that talk about that. it. That's key and it, it goes to how the team was formed. Right. I've heard from my friends that, that Microsoft's uh, execu execs pulled key employees out from all sorts of different teams across the com company, especially the Xbox team, because Xbox guys understand the consumer, understand how to build beautiful UI, and understand how to build Xbox Live. I think that's mm -hmm. the one example inside uh, Microsoft where uh, you build a consumer level scaled, highly scaled program that works worldwide where we can talk or play yeah. against each other no matter where we are in the world. And that sounds a lot like something I really want on a phone. Right? That's exactly it. And I, I think you know, the Xbox example is, is but one. Um, it's, it's, it's not a big secret that, um, that the mobile group basically got permission to raid the company uh, for, for a lot of great talent. We yeah. have the highest percentage of, of distinguished engineers, uh, certainly re relative to our, uh, you know, the revenue um, of, of anybody, because of the strategic importance of this space. Yeah. And, and we knew that we needed to, uh, to do something really amazing. Well, that's also smart, because uh, let's talk about Google. Google has the Android phone, which doesn't look that interesting. It, it actually does look like a copy of the iPhone, you know, the icon graph, and yeah. it doesn't look, it, it's not like this. It doesn't bring something dramatically new in terms of UI and user experience but it does have this reef behind it. I mean, if you go to google.com slash dashboard and you look at how many services I'm on that Google owns, like Picasa Photos and mm -hmm. Gmail for Gmail, you know, for mail and, and uh, YouTube for videos and, and on and on and on. I, I'm on dozens of services that Google owns. I call yeah. it a reef. Yeah. And these, pe these things are now pieces of glass that expose that reef. Yeah. And the fact that Microsoft has it, people from all over the company on this team, yeah. that tells me that you're, you know that, and you're going to compete with that reef. Yeah, I think there's that, and there's the notion that that uh, we can we can do a better job of of collaborating across the company to bring the assets that Microsoft has to bear. So so from a at, at all level, levels of the stack, right? So from the developer tools with Silverlight and and yeah. XNA 
to, um, to the services with live services. I think the difference that, one difference that I would say is that we have, uh, the reef that we're building is not necessarily uh, contingent on that service being from Microsoft. So for example, um, the third party participation that we'll see in, in, in some of our hubs. The, the yeah. music and video hub is a great one. So Seismic was just on stage an hour ago uh, exactly. showing off a, a, a version of uh, their Twitter and Facebook client for, uh, for the Windows Mobile. Right. And tell me, um, uh, Oh, who, who is, uh, anyways, there was an exec who built a Twitter client in five minutes yeah. using Silverlight. Yeah, Scott tell me, Guthrie did that. Scott Guthrie yeah. did that, yeah, that's yeah. what I was trying to remember. Um, tell me a little bit about the developer story. What is XNA, first of all, because I, I know that he's into okay. the developer story, and tell me the Silverlight story. Sure, well, um, uh, at Mix Today, Scott Guthrie did do some great demos and showed really how we're bringing some of the great developer platform and frameworks that we've built for both Xbox and, and the PC and the web to bear on the phone to really connect all the dots and to really extend the platform across all of them. XNA is a framework that we developed uh, to uh, kind of bridge the gap between Xbox game development and PC game. Uh, both are rich markets with, with lots of, of devoted followers and great businesses, um, but from a development aspect, if you wanted to build a, a game for Xbox 360 and then also do that game on, on the PC, you basically had to rewrite it uh, to, to get it to, uh, on the PC environment. XNA abstracted that and allowed for a greater degree of reuse of that code across those platforms. And so we've taken that framework and extended it to the phone. So now I have the ability as a game developer to, to really focus all of my creativity and my energy and my resources on building a great game not on rewriting it for a different execution environment. Yeah. So I have an awesome Xbox game that also can run on the PC, that also can run on the phone. And there's a, another la there's a couple of layers to this, right? There's the, 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 the code reuse, yeah. so I can get upwards of 90% code reuse. But then there's the notion that the service, Xbox Live, as a, as a network and a, a community of gamers, um, spans all of those as well. So I could be I could be playing a game on this device and, and playing it against my my son who's playing on Xbox Exa with an Xbox uh, X and A game. Yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of scenarios. There's like okay. kind of the, the extending the platform for simultaneous, uh, you know, gaming multiplayer gaming across those different uh, environments. Or there's kind of the 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 serial um, you know asynchronous. I, I I start a game on the. Uh, Xbox 360, or, or my son does, and then I tell him it's time to quit, uh, you know, we're going to grandma's house. And okay. well, in that scenario, uh, he can pause the game on the Xbox, shut it down, uh, get the phone, and in the car uh, on the way to grandma's, keep playing the game. Okay. Um, so there's that kind of serialization, but, but really th the community aspects of it, um, the idea that I'll be able to do role-based games, and, and it's, a, it's a great example of this idea that the platform today is not just the phone or yeah. just the web or just the PC or just the game console, but it's all of them connected and integrated in a meaningful way that has the appropriate rendering on the device that you happen to be in front of at the time. Okay. And it's really powerful. Um, I want to know a little bit about the hardware. First of all, Microsoft's not building this device. It's no. still the Microsoft model where, yes. uh, where you build the, the scenario of, of the OS and the uh, basic specs of the hardware. How many different hardware partners are you going to have building Windows Mobile 7 devices? Well, we'll, we'll have a bunch. Uh, and we announced at Mobile World Congress that some of the leading hardware manufacturers will be supporting uh, Windows phones and have Windows phones later this year when we ship. Yeah. Um, so we do have the same model. I think it, it, there are some differences though. We, we have more guidance and we have uh, we really want to focus on a great user experience and, and, and also make it great for developers. So whereas Historically, our platform has had so much choice that it, it, it meant developers had to be able to target multiple, multiple screen resolutions and, and aspect ratios. Um, we'll really provide a lot more guidance in terms of the hardware. It'll be, uh, it'll be great hardware, you'll have graphics acceleration, you'll have uh, at a predictable screen resolution and aspect ratio. Have You'll you have announced those uh, specs, the screen resolution specs yet? Uh, yeah, that we've talked about some of that on, up on our uh, up on our developer. If you go to developer.microsoft, or I'm sorry, developer.windowsphone.com, yep. uh, you can download some of the tools that were announced today and get a whole bunch of the technical details on, on writing apps for, uh, for Windows Phone. Is this going to be a worldwide phone? Because some of the devices out there only work in the United States or only work on certain kinds of cell yeah. networks. Tell me about it. Am I going to be able to buy a Windows Phone and go to Europe 
Europe and go to Japan. Absolutely, and, absolutely. Okay. We have uh, we have plans to uh, uh, not just uh, ship Windows phones worldwide in, in each region, but also have the capability to have uh, to have the world phones uh, as well and, and have them roam. Cool. Is there anything else we should know about the phone, or something that we should uh, uh, key in and look at when we uh, well, when these I, things start coming on the market? I think that. For me personally, the, the the kind of the most powerful thing that's happened when I started using the Windows Phone is is how how quickly it felt like it was mine, and how it exposed my my stuff in 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 a, such a meaningful way, and it didn't force me into kind of the same model of diving down into a given application to go do something. Uh, it, it shows me my friends, my pictures, my music, yeah. uh, my favorites, my web pages, and and. And the in, and the live updating so those so is it so it integrates them and it uh, and it really presents it in a personalized way so uh, I'm really excited to see some of the third party stuff that happens based on what we saw at Mix this morning and, and how creative uh, the whole the whole ecosystem will get. Very cool. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, I definitely want to get one because it's yeah. it's finally a phone from Microsoft that looks really cool. <laughs> it's <laughs> so. pretty cool. We're excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.